Horton Plains National Park, Sri Lanka. This misty plateau is situated over 2,000 meters above sea level. Compared to the lowlands, the climate here is much cooler. Even the cloud forests have adapted to withstand the chilly weather. But what about the animals? How have they adapted? For instance, this montane purple-faced langur has long, thick fur which helps it keep warm. Due to their shaggy appearance, this animal is also known as the bear monkey. A sudden alarm call by sambar deer means that a leopard is nearby. The leopard is the top terrestrial carnivore in the jungles of Sri Lanka. But even leopards in this ecosystem have adapted to face the cold weather. Like other animals living at high altitudes, these leopards have extra body fat to retain heat. But how does this work? For one, the extra layer of fat acts as insulation. Furthermore, these fat reserves are also burned to provide energy and body heat. Additionally, these leopards have thick fur. The fur traps dead air between the skin and fur, creating insulation to keep the leopard warm. Hence, these physical adaptations probably make these highland leopards look bigger than the lowland leopards of Sri Lanka. On average, a male Sri Lankan leopard can weigh between 60 to 80 kilograms, though larger leopards have been recorded. But are these highland leopards bigger, or is it an illusion? For instance, Amur leopards also live in a cold climate in East Russia and parts of China. They also have thick fur and extra body fat. But look anywhere, and you'll find that their average body weight is listed as being between 40 to 60 kilograms, which is much lower than the Sri Lankan leopard. Regardless of their thick fur and robust appearance, the Amur leopard is generally considered to be a smaller leopard subspecies. Found in the mountains of Central Asia and the Indian subcontinent, snow leopards inhabit elevations of up to 4,500 meters. These animals have also adapted to the cold weather. They have long fur that can grow up to 5 inches, coupled with a long, thick tail that they wrap around their body to keep warm. Regardless, these animals are not that large either. A research conducted in 2022 revealed that the average weight of a male snow leopard is just around 40 kilograms, which is around 90 pounds. It's also important to note that Amur leopards suffer from a diminished prey base since the animals they feed on are hunted by humans. So they may suffer from a lack of proper nutrition. As for snow leopards, Studies have revealed that their main prey base ranges from 36 to 72 kilograms in weight, which is significantly lower than the weight of prey at Horton Plains in Sri Lanka. So, it's possible to assume that the larger size of highland leopards in Sri Lanka is directly associated with the consumption of sambar deer. These deer are bigger and can weigh well over 100 kilograms. Furthermore, they are the largest deer species in Sri Lanka. Some believe that the consumption of such larger prey may be the reason why leopards at Horton Plains look bigger. Furthermore, the leopard is the apex predator in Sri Lanka. Unlike India or Africa, leopards have no competition from tigers or lions here. Hence, due to their status as the apex predator, it's believed that Sri Lankan leopards have evolved to become larger than other leopard subspecies. Although this theory is also debatable because larger leopards have been recorded in Africa and Iran too. In most parts of Africa, the leopard is not the top predator. Here, the vast savannas and grasslands are ruled by lions. Regardless, leopards have reached exceptional sizes in Africa even amidst the presence of other predators. So, it's questionable whether being an apex predator affects the overall body mass of leopards. In his book, The Hunters or the Hunted, C.K. Bryan mentions that he once captured an African leopard that weighed 96 kilograms, which is around 211 pounds. He also states that African leopards weighing over 200 pounds have occasionally been recorded. There have been records of large Persian leopards, too. 
Found in countries like Iran, the Persian leopard is one of the largest leopard subspecies. It's believed that in some regions in northern Iran, Persian leopards weigh around 70 kilograms on average, which is heavier than the average weight of Sri Lankan leopards. Till recently, nine leopard subspecies were classified. Later, the North China leopard and Amur leopard were combined as one subspecies. Throughout their global range, the weight of leopards can range between 30 to 90 kilograms, which is between 65 to 200 pounds. However, the African leopard, Persian leopard, and Sri Lankan leopard can sometimes weigh over 90 kilograms. In Sri Lanka, the largest leopard ever recorded supposedly weighed 113 kilograms. This picture, taken by author Trevor Lebrouille in the 1950s, shows the leopard after it was shot down. If this record is accurate, this leopard may be the largest leopard ever recorded. But on average, it's hard to believe that the weight of Sri Lankan leopards exceeds 100 kilograms. Even in Africa, leopards weighing around 90 kilograms are a rarity. Furthermore, in the lowland jungles of Sri Lanka, a large body size would be inconvenient for a leopard. These leopards constantly need to wade through thick jungles, and a heavy body size would be quite cumbersome. But at Horton Plains, the ecosystem is different. Here, as mentioned earlier, having a larger body is beneficial for a leopard, largely due to the cold climate. While these highland leopards do have morphological variations, they are structurally the same as other Sri Lankan leopards. Hence, they are not a separate subspecies. There is only one leopard subspecies in Sri Lanka, which is scientifically referred to as Panthera pardiscotia, which was first described in 1956. Later genetic studies also confirmed that the Sri Lankan leopard was a unique subspecies. So basically, there's no biological difference between the lowland leopards in Sri Lanka and the highland leopards of Horton Plains. Coupled with additional body fat and a thick fur coat, the leopards of Horton Plains look marginally bigger than other leopards in the country. But they all belong to the same leopard subspecies. Nonetheless, an argument could be made for classifying highland leopards in Sri Lanka as a separate subspecies. For instance, in the highlands, this purple-faced leaf monkey is classified as a separate subspecies, which is also known as the bear monkey. Currently, there are four subspecies of the purple-faced leaf monkey in Sri Lanka. It's said that all four subspecies have different cranial structures and variations in body size. With that same logic in mind, why can't the highland leopards of Sri Lanka be classified as a separate subspecies? Compared to other leopards in Sri Lanka, these highland leopards also display broader facial characteristics and a larger body size. While these traits are not sufficient to warrant a subspecies classification, one can argue that these leopards have been geographically isolated in the highlands of Sri Lanka for some time. With time, geographic isolation could lead to genetic differences within the same species. At one time, 27 leopard subspecies were classified globally. In the African continent, 12 leopard subspecies were categorized. Throughout the African continent, leopards displayed significant morphological differences, which is why so many leopard subspecies were classified in Africa. For instance, leopards in the region of Somalia or Eritrea were considered to be smaller than other African leopards. Here's a picture of a small leopard from Eritrea from the 1930s. Back then, the Eritrean leopard was considered to be a separate subspecies. However, leopards in other parts of Africa are notably larger. Even in the Indian subcontinent, three leopard subspecies were classified. Later, all three leopard subspecies were subsumed as the Indian leopard. Isolated from mainland Indian leopards, the Sri Lankan leopard thrived in the island of Sri Lanka as a distinct subspecies, ultimately becoming the apex predator of the country. Today, it's only one of two island leopards in the world. Currently, it's estimated that there are between 700 to 1,000 leopards in Sri Lanka, but there's no definite estimate. 
However, most of these leopards live in the lowlands. Located in the Central Highlands, Horton Plains is the only Highland National Park where visitors can probably see a leopard. The vegetation at Horton Plains is a mix of montane cloud forests and extensive grasslands. Unlike lowland national parks, seeing a leopard here is not easy at all. Within a span of 31 square kilometers, there's only one stretch of road between the two entrances for visitors to travel. Anyone visiting the park will have to drive up and down this 10 kilometer road to look for leopards. More often than not, most leopard sightings will be far away from the main road. Hence, having a pair of binoculars is essential when looking for leopards here. From the main road, leopards can be encountered as near as 10 meters, or they can be seen even as far as 400 meters away, which is why binoculars are an essential tool at Horton Plains. While driving along the main road of this park, the endless panorama of grassy plains may make you wonder if leopards do live here. Although leopard sightings are rare, the alarm call of sandbar deer will imply that a leopard is nearby. The alarm call is a combination of noises from leaf monkeys and sandbar deer, which sounds like this. But some leopards have become habituated, which could be one reason why there has been a spate of leopard sightings at Horton Plains. But why did leopard sightings increase? Back in the 1960s, around 1,000 hectares at Horton Plains were used for seed potato cultivation. Incidentally, the cattle manure that was used to fertilize the potato fields included seeds of exotic grasses. Consequently, these fodder grasses attracted large herds of sambar deer. Some believe that due to the abundance of sambar deer, more leopards migrated to Horton Plains. But more probably, it's fair to say that even though leopard sightings have increased, the overall leopard population at Horton Plains might be relatively stagnant. As mentioned earlier, the gradual process of habituation where certain leopards feel comfortable with human presence, may be why leopard sightings have increased at Horton Plains. But why is Horton Plains ideal for leopards? Apart from prey animals, leopards have easy access to water here too. Despite the climate, the annual rainfall at Horton Plains is less than 2,000 millimeters, which is quite low compared to other lowland rainforests but the montane forests can strip water from the misty atmosphere. The unique cloud forests in these highlands absorb moisture from the mist, converting it to water, which ultimately transforms into various waterways. Coupled with access to quality water and ample prey, Horton Plains is a suitable sanctuary for leopards. Since there's ample prey available, the leopard density at Horton Plains is high. However, compared to other popular national parks, the leopard population at Horton Plains is small. Though there's no definite estimate, 20 to 40 leopards probably inhabit the park. Undoubtedly, the number of sambar deer is higher than leopards. But the leopard serves a vital purpose here. By preying on sambar deer, they help keep the deer population in check. If not for the leopard, the sambar deer population would increase which would lead to overgrazing, thereby damaging the sensitive vegetation at Horton Plains. In Sri Lanka, the leopard sits on top of the food chain in many ecosystems as the apex predator. In this complex food chain or food web, the lowest tier includes principal food producers like plants. The second tier includes primary consumers like sambar deer, wild boar, and purple-faced leaf monkeys. The next tier includes animals like jackals and mongooses that rely on primary consumers, while the top tier is dominated by the leopard. Hence, the Sri Lankan leopard plays a vital role in this ecosystem. Although leopards have a safe sanctuary at Horton Plains, in other parts of the highlands, they are threatened by human encroachment and habitat loss. These central highlands are dotted with tea plantations, which have fragmented most of the leopard's former habitat. Often, leopards stray into these human-dominated landscapes in search of easy prey. 
as a result, leopards are frequently entangled in snares meant for other animals. Sadly, many leopards have perished due to injuries from these snares. If this issue is not addressed properly, a major human leopard conflict will erupt in the region. This will not only result in leopard deaths, but will probably affect human lives too.